So this lesson was talking about linear inequalities in two variables, which really is what we were doing in the last lesson as well, the graphing linear inequalities in the coordinate plane. The difference is that we weren't specifying what one of the variables were in a previous lesson. So all of our lines basically went straight up and down. We would say that x could be between 2 and 5, and y could be whatever it wanted. So we would still be graphing on an xy graph, but we would just sort of vertically graph y as being anything it wanted to be as long as x was within the, the boundaries that we'd set. In this lesson, the difference is that we're going to be graphing all the values where x and y together can only be as big as a certain value. So our line, really the only difference is our line is going to be at an angle. That really is what it boils down to. Instead of just being a vertical or a horizontal line, we're going to have a sort of a slanted line. And Andrew sent in a question here that I think applies very well to what we're talking about. He said, my teacher said if I need to graph 4y minus 3x is greater than 6, I should graph the line. <laughs> he says, what line? And he's, he's right, actually, technically there isn't a line here. Um, the, the line, there's a line that represents the boundary of what's there, but this is not the equation of a line. So you're right, Andrew, um, although your teacher's got a good point, too. If we graph the line 4y minus 3x equals 6, then we can use that information to graph this inequality much more easily. So that's the line that your teacher was talking about. So let's take a look at what we talk, what we mean by that. So we have 4y minus 3x is, le or is greater than 6. So no matter what happens, no matter what x and y are, they have to multiply by 4 and 3 respectively and then be subtracted from each other so that their total value is 6. So really, we're going to come up with some number for each of those. And then as long as they're both bigger than that, it's OK. It doesn't have to be just exactly 6. But if we can find this point, that line where they equal 6 is sort of the boundary. Anything below that is going to be too small. Anything above that will be OK. So let's actually graph the line 4y minus 3x equals 6 and find out where that boundary line is. So here, I like doing the, the uh, slope-intercept formula just because I think it's easier to graph that way. So let's solve this in slope-intercept formula. And we'll have um, 4y equals 3x plus 6, and then divide everything by 4, and we get y equals 3 fourths x plus 6 fourths, which is 1 and a half, right? So we know that our y-intercept is at 1 and a half, so there's a point right here, and that our slope is 3 fourths, so it's rise 3, run 4, so we have 1, 2, 3, and then over to 4, so we have a point right here, or it's rise negative 3, 1, 2, 3, run negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's a point right over here. Yeah, so our line then looks like it goes down in this direction here. Now before I draw that in though, um, I want to point something out, and that is that our original statement was that x and y have to combine to be less than 6, not less than or equal to. They're less than 6. So we're not actually going to include that line. If x and y are the values that are represented on this line right here, then they would equal 6. That's what this line says. As long as x is negative 1 and a half, or negative 4, and y is negative 1 and a half, we get 6. 6 is not okay. We have to be bigger than that. So we're going to draw that line that we just graphed in dashed saying this is the border but it's not actually included. Now anything bigger than that is okay. So what we can do then is just graph everything above that line. Everything bigger than that. So we can sort of shade in above the line that we just graphed. So really these these are not dramatically more difficult than just graphing a standard line. In fact that really is all you need to do and then identify which way you shade. If what you have is greater than the given value, you're going to shade up. And if what you have is smaller than the given value, you're going to shade down. That's all there is to it. 